I've been saying for years that Google would eventually dominate AI, not because ChatGPT isn't great, but because Google owns the data, the distribution, and now with Gemini 3, the capabilities to change how marketing gets done. In this video, I'm gonna break down what Gemini actually does better than ChatGPT, how it'll change search, content, and advertising, and what that means for your business in 2026. Because this isn't just about which AI writes better copy. It's a choice about which ecosystem you build your growth engine on, and picking the wrong one has real costs. Let's get started. Most marketers think you're choosing between two chatbots, write a blog with ChatGPT or write with Gemini. What's the difference, right? Wrong. What you're actually doing is choosing which tech company gets to control your marketing costs, your execution speed, and your competitive edge for the next decade. Here's what I mean. OpenAI just went into what people inside the company are calling code red mode. They froze non-essential products, shopping agents, health tools, their advertising products, even internal initiatives to focus entirely on upgrading ChatGPT to compete with Gemini 3. Why? Because Gemini 3 shipped. It topped industry benchmarks and Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, literally tweeted, I'm not going back to ChatGPT. When the CEO of OpenAI sees that, and immediately reshuffles their entire product roadmap, that tells you something critical. These aren't stable tools you're casually using. These are platforms at war and your marketing infrastructure is shaking with them. Think about what you've built in the last 12 months if you're using ChatGPT. Custom GPTs for ad copywriting, prompt libraries for blog content, team training on how to use it effectively, integrations with your CMS, Slack, Google Sheets, workflows where ChatGPT generates a draft and your team edits it. That's all infrastructure investment. And when OpenAI pivots overnight because Google launched something better, your ROI on all that infrastructure is suddenly at risk. The same goes for Google. If you're all in on Gemini and Google changes their pricing model or senses a feature you depend on, you're stuck. So here's what you need to understand. This isn't about picking the better AI. It's about recognizing that you're making a platform bet whether you realize it or not. And most marketers are making that bet with zero strategy for what happens when the platform changes the rules. I've been predicting Google's AI dominance since day one of ChatGPT's hype cycle. Not because I'm a Google fanboy, I'm not, but because they have one structural advantage no other AI company can ever replicate. Data. Every Google search for the last 25 years, every YouTube video ever uploaded, every Gmail ever sent, every Google Doc, every click, every ad impression. Google literally has decades of human behavior, intent, and knowledge running through their service. Every time you use Chrome browser, they have that data as well. According to a study we did at my agency, NP Digital, Google processes over 13.7 billion searches per day. That's 5 trillion searches a year. If you want to break it down to seconds, that's 158,500 searches every single second. And every one of those searches is training data. OpenAI, they have to buy data, scrape the web, and license content from publishers. Anthropic is doing the same thing. But Google owns the pipes. They are the internet for most people. And here's a kicker that most people miss. When ChatGPT launched and embarrassed Google's Sergey Brin, one of the original founders, he came back. He saw the bureaucracy slowing Google down and just started smashing through it. There's a clip from the All In podcast where they talk about Brin getting frustrated with internal politics and basically telling Sundar, the CEO, saying, hey, I can't deal with these people. You need to deal with this. I was like, I talked to him, I was like, I can't deal with these people. You need to deal with this. Like, I just like, I'm, I'm beside you. Leading to quick policy fixes. Only founders can do that. Only founders have the authority to look at a VP who says that's not realistic or we need six months for approvals and just say, I don't care, make it happen. Employees can't do that. Professional CEOs have to navigate politics, but founders, founders have invisible hammer. And when they decide something is existential, bureaucracy evaporates. That's why Gemini 3 shipped faster than anyone expected. That's why Google is suddenly iterating at startup speed despite having roughly a $4 trillion company. But it's not just software. Google's building the hardware infrastructure to win long term. 
You saw the Facebook deal, right? Meta's in talks to purchase Google's TPUs, Tensor Processing Units. These are Google's answers to NVIDIA chips. Meta's trying to buy them instead of NVIDIA. That caused Google's stock to spike towards that $4 trillion market cap and NVIDIA's stock to drop. According to Bloomberg, Google's TPU infrastructure can process AI workloads 4x more efficiently than NVIDIA's H100 chips for certain tasks. So what does that mean? It means Google has strategic control of the entire AI stack, the data, the algorithms, and the physical chips processing it all. OpenAI is dependent on Microsoft for cloud infrastructure and NVIDIA for chips. That's a structural disadvantage they can't engineer their way out of. When you think about which AI to build your marketing operation around, you need to ask which company has a structural advantages to keep winning long term. Google has data, distribution, search, YouTube, Gmail, workspace, proprietary hardware, and founder level urgency. That's not hype, that's infrastructure. And infrastructure wins platform wars. Most people don't know this, but Google and OpenAI aren't even playing the same business model. OpenAI charges $20 a month for ChatGPT+. They charge enterprises hundreds or thousands per month for API access. Why? Because ChatGPT is their business. They need it to be profitable or at least break even to survive as a company. Google, they don't care about making money directly from Gemini. Let me say that again, because it's critical. Google does not need Gemini to be profitable. Google is the most profitable company that exists to date with over $116 billion in annual profit. Gemini is a strategic asset that drives people into Google Workspace, Google Cloud, Google Ads, YouTube, the entire ecosystem. The AI itself doesn't need to be a profit center. It just needs to keep you inside Google's world where they monetize you in 10 other ways. According to Google's Q3 2024 earnings, Google's cloud revenue hit 11.4 billion in a single quarter, up 35% year over year. Google ads revenue was 65.5 billion for the quarter. Do you think they care about charging $20 a month for Gemini when they're making billions keeping you in their ecosystem? No, that means Google can undercut OpenAI on price, offer Gemini bundled into products you're already paying for, and subsidize the costs with revenue from ads, cloud, and enterprise tools. We've seen this playbook before. Gmail launched with massive free storage, with competitors like Yahoo offering limited free storage and paid tiers. Google Docs, it was free when Microsoft Office was charging $300 plus back in the day. Then it led Microsoft to offer free versions of their software and eventually now having subscriptions that range from $7 to $22 per month per user. Android, free operating system to compete with iOS. Google Maps API, free for years to kill competitors, then monetize once dominant. The pattern is always the same. Google uses free or cheap products to dominate ecosystems, then monetizes through other channels. OpenAI doesn't have that luxury. If they drop ChatGPT prices too low, they burn cash and run out of runway. If they raise prices too high, they lose customers to Google. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what does this mean for your marketing budget? If you're building your entire content operation, ad workflow, and analytics stack around ChatGPT, you're betting that OpenAI can stay price competitive with a company that doesn't need to charge for AI to win. In my opinion, that's a dangerous bet. And if you're wrong, you'll pay two to three X more to stick with ChatGPT or spend a few months rebuilding all your workflows around Gemini. The smartest markers I know aren't choosing between ChatGPT and Gemini. They're using both strategically and it's giving them an unfair advantage. Now, before I break this down, if you need help with your marketing and you just want a company to just do this all for you, check us out at NP Digital, where we help companies integrate AI into the marketing, as well as get them traffic and conversions from all these new AI platforms. Here's what a fluid model workflow looks like in practice. Use case number one, the Nano Banana Ad Creative Workflow. This is a workflow we've built for one client that cut creative production from about three days to roughly 45 minutes. Step one, use Gemini to analyze top performing ads in your niche. You can use a prompt like this. Why Gemini? Because Google's Gemini is wired into the web and it's strong at pattern spotting across recent examples and trends. You can combine that with assets you paste in. Step two, Use ChatGPT to generate 10 ad copy variations based on those insights. Here's a prompt you can use. Why ChatGPT? ChatGPT typically produces more conversational, emotional-driven language, which often performs better in direct response ads. Step three, 
use Nano Banana to turn those copy variations into visual ad creatives automatically. You can use this prompt. Why Nano Banana? Nano Banana generates amazing ad creatives really well, and you can pump out all sorts of versions so you can test angles immediately instead of waiting on a designer. The result, you go from concept to 10 testable ad variations in under an hour, using each model where it tends to be the strongest. Use case number two, SEO content that actually ranks. Step one, use Gemini for keyword research and SERP analysis. Because it's wired into Google search, Gemini is great at servicing real-time queries, SERP features, and what types of pages are currently ranking. Step two, use ChatGPT to write content. In practice, ChatGPT often produces more conversational, story-driven articles that keep readers engaged, which tends to correlate with better engagement metrics. Step three, Use Gemini to refine titles and metadata descriptions based on what's actually showing up in today's results. Use case three, data analysis plus reporting. Step one, export your Google Analytics, Facebook ads, and email marketing data into a Google Sheet. Step two, use Gemini, which integrates natively with Google Sheets to analyze the data. You can use this prompt. Step three, use ChatGPT to write the client-facing report. You can use this prompt. Why? In practice, ChatGPT often produces clearer, more persuasive explanations of what the data means and what to do next. Now, everything I'm showing you is actionable, but it still requires a team that can execute. Writers, editors, strategists, analysts. If you don't have the infrastructure yet, my agency NP Digital does. We work in over 20 countries across the world, and we have over a thousand people that work with all the way from small and medium brands to global 1000 companies that are publicly traded. ChatGPT and Gemini are still similar enough that switching is manageable. Prompts translate easily, outputs are comparable, and your team won't need extensive retraining. But that's changing fast. As these platforms mature, they diverge significantly. Google will embed Gemini throughout its ecosystem, ads, analytics, YouTube, Gmail. OpenAI will develop ChatGPT exclusives, custom GPTs, enterprise tools, API features. Higher divergence means a higher switching costs. Enterprises are expected to invest millions in AI infrastructure soon, with many CIOs concerned about vendor lock-in. Most companies will build systems optimized for one platform, and when prices increase or competitors improve, they'll be trapped. The infrastructure choices you make now will dictate your flexibility and cost for the next five years. Here's what you need to do. Number one, make platform strategy a Q1 2020 priority. Don't treat this as an IT decision, treat it as a business strategy decision. Get leadership involved. Map out your AI dependencies. Identify where you have lock and risk. Two, build multimodal testing into your workflow. Every quarter, benchmark your core AI tasks across ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude. Track your performance, your cost, the output quality. Make switching decisions based on data, not inertia or brand preference. Three, train your team on AI principles, not platforms. Teach them how to write effective prompts, structure workflows, and evaluate outputs, skills that transfer across any model. Don't just teach how to use ChatGPT, teach them how to think about AI strategically. Four, build platform agnostic documentation. Every prompt, every workflow, every process, document it in plain language that works across models. Don't hard code step three, use ChatGPT to generate X. Instead, write step three, use AI to generate X and know which model currently performs the best. The pattern is always the same. Platform lock-in is a tax. Platform agility is a moat. And it matters more with AI than it ever did before because AI is improving exponentially, not linearly. Gemini 3 is beating ChatGPT on some benchmarks right now. OpenAI's rumored garlic model might be leapfrogging Gemini next quarter. Anthropic could release the next Claude and change the game entirely. If you're locked into one platform, you miss those improvements. You're stuck waiting for your vendor to catch up. But if you're platform agnostic, every improvement across every vendor makes you faster, cheaper, and better. Stop asking, which AI should I use? Start asking, how do I build a marketing operation that wins no matter which AI wins? That's a strategy that compounds. That's the moat that lasts. And that's how you train AI from a tool into an unfair competitive advantage. If you want to learn more about how you can use AI tools to grow your business, watch one of these videos next.